Look at our beautiful finished product, mid-range stone, so to speak. Mid-range diameter, I should say. If you think of the center of the shape as being somewhere around there, that's why over here it only lost about a millimeter. But this point and this point are far from that center shape. That's where you can see the real cost of shaping to a six and a half foot wheel. This one is you're looking at the, a wheel that's about four foot diameter coming towards you. This will be used to grind to the back of the bevel plane and then we'll use this one to refine. To finish this 40 by 175 classic well, I messed around with uh, my ring light flash, and that is one hell of a process working in extremely close ranges, but I was able to make a good pretty picture. So you can see that now. What I'm gonna do is try to make the bevel wider from, from, its, from its spine side to the end of the edge. And this stone you see me using now is a four foot wheel approximately going toward and away from the camera position. So the idea is to hang out on this for a while until we see the bevel plane getting wider everywhere. And then we will switch to the funny looking boo with the deposit in it, and then finally to our finisher. It's 124. I imagine I'm going to be on this one for a good 10 minutes before we see any meaningful change. So first we're looking to put some meaningful mileage on that bevel width, and then we're looking to blend it all together to be the, the same width. So get some change and then chase the change being the same everywhere because it is you know four foot this way but it's uh you know 15 or whatever that way so you can only touch a little bit at a time a four foot cylinder would be more useful i would have to agree with that horses for courses right You can easily see the razor bending across its cutting edge, given this sweet camera angle. Remember, it's the way that you can't see it, so to speak, like, like this. The way it's bending like that is what really matters. That's the bend that will cause the uh, appearance of the bevel that you can see to get much wider. It's pretty important that I keep the spine of this razor parallel with the axis that you see right there, or the facet, I should say. That way, regardless of which part of the razor is being touched, it's always being touched by that same size wheel. When you go like this, now you're aligning incongruent spots on the spine, and you're using a bigger wheel on this particular stone. I'm going to stop and uh, take the little blue thing and compare my work. Well, I think we're ready for this gorgeous boy. So now we're working a six and a half foot wheel. And this wheel is a very fast home.
Well, I've known this razor, I mean, I should say, I've known this hone a long time. This is as smooth as I've felt it in the bad zone. Let's see how it feels facing this facet to me. It feels good. I've added just a little bit of the ballastol to the mixture. Well, I think this is a delightful mid-range stone. I do not feel any clicks that are different in one direction than the other. So I do not think it will hurt the razor. But you do need a very light touch. And you want to torque ever so slightly toward the direction you're going by twisting your um, tang holding fingers to force the cutting edge to go down so that you're sort of tracing the wheel that way. It's clearly better for the right-handed person using it the other way than what you're seeing me do now. I just want to try to put on some wear in the directions that you don't find the boo appealing. Otherwise, it tends to wear out much faster. I'll keep watering down that ballastol and see you in about a minute. Well, it's 1.39. I suppose we haven't been at this very long, have we? I'm going to go for about a minute and a half of finishing on this 25 by 6 and a half foot wheel. I am using my experience feeling this kind of surface to try and bend the bevel ever so slightly by challenging it with an effective diameter that is nearly to the apex but just behind it because if your curved tone touches the cutting edge uh, where it's less than one tenth of a millimeter on a hollow ground straight razor that's properly tempered, that steel will flex to meet the curve of the hone. And that's where the magic comes. I'm going to try to strop with my uh, shaped home behind the strop so that the strop surface is a curve too.
I did an okay job. You can go crazy with this stuff. The blue thing clearly says no frown.